Today, we're diving into a hot topic that has puzzled many sports enthusiasts. Why haven't cue sports like snooker and billiards made it to the Olympics? You'd think with the precision, skill, and global fan base, they'd be a shoe in But it's not that simple. So let's explore the intricate reasons behind this Olympic absence. Cue sports, including the precision games of snooker, billiards, and pool, hold a special place in the hearts of sports fans all around the globe. These games are not just about hitting balls into pockets. They require an incredible level of finesse, strategic foresight, and mental toughness, making every match a thrilling display of skill. Snooker in particular commands a massive following, especially in the UK and China, where it's considered almost a national pastime. Its popularity isn't confined to these traditional strongholds either. It's on the rise across Europe and Asia, gaining new fans and players who appreciate its unique blend of skill, concentration, and drama. Despite this widespread appeal and its recognition in other prestigious international competitions like the World Games, snooker, like its Q-sport cousins, remains conspicuously absent from the Olympic roster. This ongoing omission raises questions about what exactly it takes for a sport to break into the tightly curated Olympic lineup, particularly when it seems to tick many of the necessary boxes. Let's dive a bit deeper into the origins and evolution of Q-sports. Tracing back to the 15th century in Europe, these games started as outdoor activities similar to croquet among the lush green estates of the nobility. Over the centuries, they transitioned from grass to the green bays of the indoor tables we know today, becoming more refined and varied along the way. Billiards, for instance, which originally involved pushing balls through hoops and into targets with a curved stick, slowly evolved into the more nuanced games of carom and pocket billiards, each with its own set of rules and styles of play. Snooker itself emerged later as a distinct sport with a compelling blend of strategy and skill, becoming particularly embedded in British and subsequently global sporting culture. So how do Q sports stack up against the latest Olympic additions like skateboarding or sport climbing? These sports have refreshed the Olympic lineup, appealing to a younger crowd with the high energy and visual appeal. In contrast, cue sports like snooker and billiards require precision and patience, qualities that shine in quiet, focused environments, not exactly the high octane atmosphere of newer Olympic events. This difference in pace and vibe could be why cue sports struggle to attract the younger, more dynamic Olympic audience. The IOC has strict criteria for including new sports in the Olympics, focusing on global appeal, youth engagement, and the overall value added to the Games. Snooker, while skilled and strategic, hasn't broadly captured the global or youth thought audience the IOC targets. It's popular in places like the UK and China, but hasn't reached the widespread appeal of sports like soccer. Plus, its appeal to older demographics doesn't help as the IOC pushes for sports that resonate with younger viewers. The quiet, methodical nature of snooker contrasts sharply with the faster, more engaging sports that fit into the compact, action-packed Olympic schedule. Before we move on, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. But not all Q Sports enthusiasts, including some of the top players, are eager for Olympic inclusion. Take Ronnie O'Sullivan, for example, a snooker titan who believes snooker thrives just fine without the Olympics. The pinnacle of say like a 100 meter runner is to win the Olympics. That's, but for a golfer or a tennis player, is it really the pinnacle to win a gold medal in the Olympics? Probably not, they'd rather win Wimbledon or they'd rather win a green jacket at golf. So for me, an Olympic sport, it has to be, the gold medal has to be the most important thing. So I'm not sure snooker should be an Olympic sport really, you know, if, you, if you're asking me my opinion on that. He points out that snooker has its own prestigious platforms, like the World Snooker Championship, which already offers high prestige and intense competition. O'Sullivan suggests that these events could even outshine the Olympics in terms of significance and challenge, providing everything players and fans crave without the need for Olympic validation. Looking at economics, snooker and other Q sports aren't just hobbies, they're big business. With hefty sponsorships and major tournaments, these sports have built a strong financial foundation that supports players and organizations alike. This financial stability allows them to operate independently of the Olympic framework, which could potentially complicate their existing structures. The financial and organizational freedom they currently enjoy is a significant factor in why some within the sport aren't vigorously campaigning for Olympic inclusion. 
In places like China and the UK, snooker is more than a game. It's a part of who they are. Millions play and watch, rooting it deeply in their national culture. This connection goes beyond mere competition. It's a symbol of national pride and historical tradition, making the question of Olympic inclusion about more than just sports. It's about heritage. The organizations overseeing Q-Sports are not sitting idle. They've been diligently refining the sport's image and tweaking governance to meet the IOC standards. Despite their efforts, the road to Olympic inclusion is riddled with bureaucratic challenges, making progress slow and the outcome uncertain. While Ronnie O'Sullivan might dismiss the need for Olympic inclusion, other players see it differently. It's got to move for me, for it to build. I'm not saying uh, it's a good move in a sense of nostalgia and history, but you, if you want to grow an event into a truly global event that, you know, with bigger audiences, better hospitality, um, you know, it's got, it's got to move to a bigger venue for me. I want it to stay forever. It's very, very special, but it can't stay as it is. It's our biggest event in our smallest venue. And in the world we live in, in the arenas we fill around the world to thousands and thousands of people, that can't continue. There are just 980 something seats out there in the Crucible Theatre and every one of them gets sold out in a heartbeat. We could sell this place 10 times over if we wanted to. Um, it cannot continue for too long having our biggest event in our smallest arena. Something will have to change. For some, the Olympics represent a platform for worldwide recognition and a showcase on the global stage. Yet others argue that the traditional tournaments, steeped in history and prestige, offer a different kind of value than the Olympic spotlight might not match. Looking ahead, the future isn't all static for Q-Sports. The World Professional Billiards and Snooker Association, along with other related organizations, are pushing the envelope. They're experimenting with snappier, more TV-friendly versions of games that could captivate a younger crowd and fit neatly into Olympic broadcasts. By tweaking formats to be quicker and more engaging, they aim to align more closely with the IOC's dynamic event criteria, holding on to hope that these innovations could eventually swing the decision in their favor. As we wrap up, it's clear that the path to Olympic inclusion for Q-Sports is anything but straightforward. Yet the ongoing evolution of these sports, adapting to contemporary trends and audience preferences, shows a proactive approach to overcoming challenges. While they continue to enrich their own prestigious circuits, the ultimate goal remains to nurture and expand their global footprint, with or without Olympic recognition. This ensures that regardless of their Olympic status, Q-Sports will continue to flourish and captivate audiences around the world. That's it for this video. What do you think about Q-Sports in the Olympics? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more discussions on your favorite sports. Catch you next time.